Good afternoon, ETM Hotel, Randy Sean. Welcome to Peace. My name is Sean. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning into the show today. Um, we're about to get into a nice build. Uh, bear with me because I am trying to uh, update the link some information so please feel free to like the show share the show um before we get to it we're gonna do what we need to do uh hopefully everybody having a good day uh kind of caught a couple of people off guard i don't expect a lot of people to actually be in the building for this um but we're going to get to it we're going to get to it. So uh, I think I do see some people here. Yeah, man. What up, what up? Give me a second and uh, we get it cracker lacking. Guess I'm at the advantage after. So I see some people popping in. I'm almost done. It's been a long day, man. Long night last night with Unk. And then an early rise with Unk and Garfield. But Garfield being nice, you know, he, uh, he had his best friends on there. XE booze and such. Uncle's killing the Bible. They didn't got him on that. So today we're going to get into West Africa. We're going to flip the script. All right, now that I got that updated and saved. Um, How y'all doing? How everybody doing out there? Press one if you can hear me. Press one if you can hear me, okay. Mic check. Well, mic sound, nice check, one, all right. Quiet right now. All right, let's get to it. What up, Zion Tremors? OG. Uh, the Mad had a K Sykes. Surrey. I see even the Dagger Squad sighting. Uh, maybe a few people hop in on the link. Uh, real quick, well, no, maybe not. However, I appreciate everybody that's sharing the show right now. Uh, again, man, like the show, share the show as you're coming in. We're about to get to it. Uh, I don't know, man. You gotta ask. You gotta ask Kofi. He online. He online. He's somewhere around here. You know, he just came from vacation, so he really ain't been saying much. I seen his head pop in when he was tagged, so he is on social media. He just ain't been saying nothing. You know how I go with him. You know what I'm saying? Guess he's taking a break. I don't know what. I don't know. I'm making like I don't know. He ain't told me nothing.
Yeah, maybe he'd be back soon. All right, let me share my screen, man. Let's go. Let's get to why we're here. purpose of this presentation today is to inspire one to look back to us Africa and draw from the source of our most recent ancient history, griots or the giants, who tell the stories of old to remind us of our past and one in particular of the great Dejale Mamadou. We know all about Jack and Jill or Humpty Dumpty, et cetera, et cetera. But little do we know about Sundiata or Nancy and others. This presentation will define some key terms, but also elaborate on the nature of oral traditions just a bit, but also summarize Jale Mamadou's attempt to tell a story about a Mali king who inspires Malians to this day. Mali guards his secrets jealously. There are things which the uninitiated will never know. For the griots, the depositories will never betray them or history recited by Malian Dejale or, or historian Mamadou Kayate. So this is a little backdrop. Mali emerged against the backdrop of a decline in, of Ghana under the uh, dynamic leadership of Sandiate of the Kita clan. But the region he took over had a past rich in trade and powerful rules. He was a lad full of strength, 
His arms had the strength of 10 and his biceps inspired fear in his companions. He had already that authoritative way of speaking, which belongs to those who are destined to command. Sandhya Takita rose to power by defeating the king of the Soso, Sumaro or Sumaguru, known as the Sorcerer King in 1235. He then brought all the Mandinka clan rulers of Mansas under his leadership, declaring himself overall Mansa. He took Timbuktu from the Tureg, transforming it into a substantial city, a focus for trade and scholarship. Sundiata's uh, name means lion prince or hungering lion, the big cat being the symbol of the Kita clan. Or tradition may be defined as being a testimony transmitted verbally from one generation to another. Its special features are the fact that it is verbal and that the manner in which it is transmitted. It is thus certainly more fragile than written records, which are embodied in objects such as manuscripts, for instance. It should be added, however, that there may be several written versions of a single event and conversely, there are stereotyped and fixed versions of oral traditions. Or traditions may originally be based either on eyewitness accounts or on an unsubstantiated room of uh, purely personal inspiration or else an interpretation of other oral texts to produce an entirely new tradition. However, only traditions based from the outset of an eyewitness account are really valid. The Jele is a storyteller in West Africa who perpetrates the oral traditions and history of a village or family. The Griot is a member of a class of traveling poets, musicians, and storytellers who maintains a tradition of oral history in parts of West Africa. I am a Griot. It is I, Jele Mamadou Kayate, uh, son of Bintu Kayate and Jele Kirian Kayate, master in the art of eloquence. Since time immemorial, the Kayates have been in the service of the Kayate Prince of Mali. We are vessels of speech. We are the repositories which uh, harbor secrets uh, many centuries old. The art of eloquence has no secrets for us. Without us, the names of kings would vanish into oblivion. We are the memory of mankind. By the spoken word, we bring to life the deeds and exploits of kings for younger generations. Thus begins the recital of the story of Sandiata as recorded by the Ghanaian scholar is related to uh, Tamsir Niane. You got to get his book. But what is meant by the word griot? The word itself has become evocative not only in the West African savannah, but also in African American literature and elsewhere. Sometimes the word is used to refer to storytellers or to those versed in the art of words. Sometimes uh, to musicians. Sometimes the keepers of traditions. As in the quote above, the repositories of secrets, the memory of mankind, sometimes more prosaically to social parasites who live from the gifts of others who reflect an oppressive feudal order, and the short who are social category distant to disappear. In fact, griots have proved adaptable to changing conditions. And if they are now more often found in the recording studios of Abidjan or Paris than in the courts of kings, then that is no more than a reflection of a present day circumstance. Kita is part of the Monday, uh, the Monday cultural area, which covers Western and Southern Mali, Northeastern Guinea, and some parts of Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal and neighboring countries. The ethnic names one encounters include Manika, Melinke or Mandingo, the Bama or Bambara, the Daula, the Sanike, or Saracole and others. The historic center of this cultural area in this town of Kangaba in Mali, southwest of Bam Bamako, about 200 kilometers from Kita. The Mandi area is in turn linked historically with the Wolof in the Syria parts of Senegal, with the Fulani and the Tokelel spread throughout West Africa, and with the kingdom, with the Masi kingdoms of Burkina Faso with the Sanre of the Mali and the Niger, and more distantly, the Hassa and the Fulani peoples of Niger and northern Nigeria. In short, we are dealing with cultural patterns 
<coughs> excuse me, that extend throughout the more or less Isl Islamicized Savannah region of the interior of West Africa, a substantial strip of territory between the coastal rainforest peoples to the south and the, uh, the desert nomads to the north. The boundaries between groups are fluid and not to be accorded undue concreteness. One noteworthy feature of the area is the existence over the last thousand years of large scale kingdoms, such as the medieval empires of Mali, ruled by the Kita clan referred to by Kayate and Ghana. This has produced a certain court culture and also strong patterns of hierarchies, a hierarchy and inequality. Mamadou Kiyate says that he teaches kings their history so they can help predict the future. He states that his words are entirely truthful as the words came from his father and his father's father. Mamadou implores the reader to listen to the history of Mali and the stories of Sandiata, the man of many names who surpassed even Alexander the Great in his greatness. At the beginning, Mali was ruled by the Mabara kings and Mamadou Kiyate's list the lineage of these first kings. One of them, Lahito Kalabi, was the first black prince to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. On his way back to Mali, he was robbed by brigands, but he was saved by God and a gene, a local nature spirit, and returned successfully to Mali. There is no single definitive version or text of the Sandiata epic story. Various versions of the Sandiata story have been and continue to be told, some performed by various African griots or bards, like uh, the uh, Jaliba in the film Kita, or performances vary and change over time, even when performed by the same single storyteller. Continued performance traditions vary locally and regionally across the Mande cultural world of West Africa, as do the styles of interpretations of individual Mande griots, professional bars. To ask, what, which is the right version? It is a very Western question, but historical accuracy or a definitive literary written down text may not be particularly important in African oral traditions. For example, the Mande people, who reverenced uh, Sandiata as a great cultural hero and continued to celebrate his memory in many and various oral epic performances of his story. In any case, the similarities in these versions generally count for more than their differences. Sandiata was a real person who lived from 1217 to 1255 century CE. While most of the epic is uh, fantastical, it's considered, uh, considered fact that Sandiata was foretold to be a great ruler of the Mali Empire. He indeed had a difficult childhood and didn't walk until the age of seven. And he then fulfilled the prophecy of uniting Mali after the Battle of Krina in 1235. The empire that Sandiata built continued to grow after his death and eventually became the largest empire in West Africa before its fall in 1670. The book's supplementary materials state that one of Sandiata's descendants was the famed Ansa Musa, who put the Mali on European maps after making a two year pilgrimage to Mecca. The clan leaders also de uh, decreed that all future Mali kings would be selected from Sandiata's descendants. Clans were reorganized, sometimes according to profession and given a new or alternative names to establish greater unity across the kingdom. The assembly also decreed that the trades such as blacksmith, weavers, and shoemakers were to be made hereditary. In short, Sandiata carefully allotted each tribal group and each person within their defined role as a part of a larger empire where loyalty and solidarity were uh, fostered. Niani, now no longer in existence and probably located on the plain near all year round navigable uh, Sakurani River was selected as the Mali Empire's new capital, protected by mountains and close to the two key sources of trade goods, forests and waterways. The city quickly became a cosmopolitan center, declared by Sandiata an imperial territory where all the people of the empire were welcome. Sandiata's central government at Niani was composed of lower tribal leaders with an addition of, uh, of a select number of Arab traders, useful for for their foreign commercial and political context.
The empire as a whole was divided into North and South with each part given a military government. The Mali empire will become the largest and richest empire yet seen in West Africa, controlling like the Ghana empire had. Regional trade rose by land and river and local resources such as gold, copper, iron, and ivory, while most of the population were farmers. The rich elite was composed of merchants who acted as middlemen between the traders to the south and the Berber-controlled caravans that crossed the Sahara to the North Africa and the Muslim world. Sandiata would continue to bring new territories under his control, and by the end of his reign, the Mali Empire would control the old kingdoms of Ghana, Walata, Tagnica, and Songhai. Significantly, these territories include the rich gold-bearing regions of Gaumen, Bambuk, and Bure. Sandiata Kita died in 1255 CE, but quite, uh, but quite how is uncertain. Some records point to an accidental but fatal arrow wound, others to drowning in the Saqqara River. His tomb is not known because of the Malinke tradition of never revealing where a king is buried. More certain is Sundiata's legacy, for the king had established a relatively stable empire, which a long line of his descendants would rule, starting with his son, Amasa Uli, 1255 to 1270 CE. The Mali Empire would keep on growing, especially during the reign of Sandiata's grandnephew, Massa Musa I, who oversaw the largest territorial expansion in West Africa, spread the religion and architecture of Islam, and famously spent tons of gold on a visit to Cairo in 1324. Here are my sources. History is a clock that people use to tell their political and cultural time of day. It is also a compass that people use to find themselves on the map of human geography. History tells the people where they have been, what they have been, where they are, what they are. All right, so I'm not gonna hold y'all too much longer. I did wanna go briefly into the history of uh, Mali dealing with Sandiata Kita, but also the significance of the Griot, the Jele Mamadou Kiyate, as he told the story for a long period of time. Now, uh, Kiyate dies um, uh, years ago in, uh, in the land of the Masi. He was somewhere in Burkina Faso. I think he may be in a, in a Ouagadou where he would uh, where he would die. Um, and but the story of Sandiata continued to uh, be told by other Malians, and they would get into specifics. Um, like I said, there is a good book that's on Amazon regarding uh, Sandiata Kita. There's also a free PDF. I don't know how useful it is. I think there's one out there that only got about. Uh, 28 or 30 pages of the book. I think is over. Is a whole lot more pages than that. Um, however, like I said earlier in the presentation, this is to shed light on the history of West Africa, its folklore, mythology, its uh, its griots, um, its entire embodiment of culture. Um, something that we need to reacclimate ourselves into because we know all these fables and and folklores and four ways of of uh, this uh, place that we're in now or the diasporan places that we are now. Um, there's a lot to learn. There's some hidden jewels all over West Africa. 
it's immediate. It's not as ancient as, as Kim it is um, or glorified as Kim, it, but there are jewels all throughout West Africa. And on that note, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning into the show today. Please make sure that you like the show, share the show. Um, this is a quick bill. You can refer back to this uh, for future references. And please, um, this, this presentation was actually done to inspire uh, you guys to actually um, purchase the book um, from a griot perspective and read it to your kids. Uh, read it to your kids. I think that that would be a beautiful thing for a lot of people to do um, because uh, you will learn um, something about uh, Sandiata that you may not have known before um, and which is a good thing. So let me give you a glimpse or a look into what I'm actually trying to inspire you to get uh, or share, I should, I should say get, I should say share. Uh, give me just a minute and uh, I'll give you a piece of the the real Lion King. Um, they also say that this movie inspired the Disney movie, The Lion King, as his name refers to the lion and so forth. That's the hints why I put that quote in there for people who, you know, really were paying attention to what I said in the presentation. So you get your movie, The Lion King, from Sundiata Kita. I'm pulling, uh, uh, I'm pulling it up now. So we can kind of deal with it today, the 10th, yeah, 4 p.m. <whistles> Try to kill two birds with one stone. Let me, let me do this. I can't read it like this. Hold on, y'all. I gotta bring it to the website. You know what? Let me give you a shot. That's why you don't do PDFs. This is exactly why you don't do PDF. I wonder if somebody else joins. I doubt it. Table of contents, skip that. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of this, this story here. Um, see how y'all like it. Let me skip over the words of the griot, Mamadou Kiate. Um, as I mentioned a little bit of what he said earlier already. And let's get into the most important part. The first kings of Mali. He says, listen then, sons of Mali, children of the black people, listen to my word. For I am going to tell you of Sundiate, the father of the bright country, of the Savannah land, the ancestor of those who draw the bow the master of a hundred vanquished kings. I'm going to talk of Sandiata, Manding Diara, Lion of Mali, Sogolon Jata, son of Sogolon, Nare Magan Jata, son of Nare Magon, Sogo Sogo Simba Salaba, hero of many names. I'm going to tell you of Sandiata. He who exploits will astonish men for a long time. Yet, he was great among kings. He was peerless among men. He was beloved of God because he was the last of the great conquerors. Right at the beginning then, Mali was a province of the Bambara kings. Those who are today called Mandingo, inhabitants of Mali, are not indigenous. They come from the east. 
Bilali, Bamaha, ancestors of the Kiatas, was the faithful servant of the Prophet Muhammad. May the peace of God be upon him. Bilali Banama had seven sons of whom the eldest, Lawolo, left the holy city and came to settle in Mali. Lawolo and Latel Kalabi for a son. Latel Kalabi had Damal Kalabi, who then had Leoto Kalabi. It's a whole bunch of Kalabis here. Leoto Kalabi was the first black prince to make the pilgrimage to Mecca. On his return, he was robbed of his brigands in the desert. His men were scattered and some died of thirst. But God saved Leoto Kalabi, for he was a righteous man. He called upon the Almighty and Jen appeared to recognize him as the king. After seven years' absence, Leoto was able to return by the grace of Allah, the Almighty, to Mali, where none expected to see him anymore. Turn the page. Then I'm just going to give you all just that little piece. But uh, as you can see from a griot's perspective, he goes in. Now let me give you a little more. Leoto Kalabi had two sons, the elder being called Kalabi Bamba and the youngest Kalabi Daman. The elder chose royal power and reign, while the younger preferred fortune and wealth and became the ancestor of those who, come, who go from country to country seeking their fortune. Kalabi Bamba had Mama, uh, Mama D. Kani for a son. Mama D. Kani was a hunter king like the first kings of Mali. It was he who invented the hunter's whistle. He communicated with the jinn of the forest and bush. These spirits had no secrets from him, and he was loved by the Kundalini sign. His followers were so uh, numerous that he formed them into an army which became formidable. He often gathered them together in the bush and taught them the art of hunting. It was he who revealed to the hunters the medicinal leaves which heal wounds and cure diseases. Thanks to the strength of his followers, he became the king of a vast country. With them, Mama D. Kani conquered all the lands which stretched from the uh, Sankarani to the board. Mama D. Kani had four sons, Kani Simba, Kamango Simba, Kambala Simba, and Simba Tagnag Kalim. They were all initiated into the art of hunting and deserved the title of Simba. It was the lineage of Bambari Tangalin, which held on to the power. His son was Mbala in Neb, whose son was Bello. Bello's son was called Bello Bakum, and he had a, a son called Magan Kanfata, also called Franco Magan uh, Kigu, Magan the Handsome. Uh, Magan Kanfata was the father of the great Sandiata and had three wives and six children, three boys and three girls. His first wife was called Sasama. Uh, he had a daughter of the great divine. She was the mother of the king Dakam Tuma and the princess uh, Nana Tribun. The second wife, Sangala Kanju, was the mother of Sandiata and the two princesses, uh, Sogolan Kolokan and Sogolan Jamaru. I'm butchering names. The third wife was one of the Kamaras and was called Namanji. She was the mother of Manding Bore or Manding Bakari, who was the best friend of his half brother, Sandiata. So I'm gonna leave it right there at that. I ain't gonna hold nobody else up. Man, like I said, you know, if you're looking for some inspiration to read to your children, we all got kids. The story of Sandiata would be a great fit. And I think that uh, everyone should tune in to that. Again, man, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, this is Sean P. Any red, uh, any red cow funny signing out. Shimam Hotel, depart in peace, and we'll catch you next week.